start to pump all the liquids out of me. And within days, I was back to normal. And today, I feel marvelous. But, but, when I came out of the hospital, something happened I'm going to tell you about. And this shows me more about the Lord and His grace. Look, not everyone is going to make heaven. Let's be real. There are preachers today in hell. One of them with a healing ministry that I knew. When, when, when he was dying, he was screaming, they're coming to get me. He was in torment as he saw demons coming to tear his life apart. It doesn't matter how you start. It matters how you finish. That's what matters to God. Now, I come out of the hospital and I have a dream. Please hear me now. This is very important. In my dream, very vivid dream, the Lord spoke to me. I see myself standing with a group of people. I didn't know who they were. All of us dressed in white robes. I was halfway in the line. I look and I see this beautiful gate, massive gate, with diamonds sparkling on the front of it. I look to my right, I saw the Lord, as, we, as, as I see any of you on the front row. I saw the Lord standing there, majestic. I even can, can tell you what his hair looked like and what robe he wore. It was just beautiful. On the left, I saw this beautiful big organ. And on the organ was this lady I knew years ago named Jeannie Klattenberg. Jeannie, the wife of Alex Klattenberg in Orlando. She wrote many songs we still sing today. Very famous lady. But she passed when she was in her early 40s with cancer and died early in life. And she's sitting on that organ. And suddenly, I see the Lord doing this. And as he motioned like that, she played the most beautiful music came out of the organ. And suddenly the, the, the gate opened and whoever was in, the, uh, in line first went in and then the gate closed. Then the Lord did this again. And the same thing happened. The music played, the gate opened, and the person went in. This is all in my dream. Then the Lord does this. The next in line was not permitted in. And she played this terrifying song came out of the organ. And suddenly, these two massive men wearing white robes, possibly angels, I don't know, they came and they took that person out of the line who was struck with fear that you can't believe. You know how it says, gnashing of teeth. You could see the fear that struck. And I was amazed how many times in my dream the Lord did this. Many of the people in that line were not permitted to, to go in. And then my turn came. This is all in my dream last year. About late summer, early fall is when that dream happened. I, I came out of the hospital in uh, in end of March. This is possibly the end of August. And uh, I see this dream. And then I saw myself standing there. And I looked. I saw the Lord. No smiles at that point. Very serious moment for my soul. We have to understand there is a side to the Lord we have not seen that Paul the Apostle saw. He said, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. The Christian life isn't all about ministry. It's the way he looks at us. We shall all stand before his judgment seat. Catherine Gooman preached a message one day where, where she said, those tears on that day, it will be too late. And how true that is. Everyone will repent one day. It, but it will be too late for some people. So now, as, as I'm standing there, and I'm looking at the, at the Lord, and I froze everything in my, you can just imagine, you know, how, how, how I felt, and I felt it in my dream, the awe of that moment. And Jean is looking, and I'm wondering, you know, is it in, you know, am I in, am I out? 
And people ask me, well, how can you say that? Paul the Apostle said that. Think about all that Paul experienced. But let me finish with my dream. But the Lord does nothing. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do this. Nothing. And I wake up. And as I woke up, I was speaking. I was actually talking. And the scripture came out of my mouth. He that endureth unto the end shall be saved. Is what I was saying as I came out of my dream. And then the Lord spoke to me just like that. He said, I'm watching you. Don't blow it. So when I came out, it shook me. You say, why would he say that to you? Because it's, it's a very serious matter with God. Paul the apostle, what did he say? He said, if I don't put my body under subjection, in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, if I don't put my body under subjection, I will be a castaway. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Knowing the terror of the Lord. That's in the Bible. Think about all Paul experienced. Think about going to heaven. Seeing things you could not talk about. And yet he would say, I would be a castaway. If Paul said that, we are all in danger. Take heed lest you fall, the Bible says. And today, that's why I say to you, we need the Holy Spirit. Without Him, we were going to all fall. Without Him, people will not stay in the faith. Let me tell you something. And I want you to think about this. I'm going to ask you a question. 